loud. Hello, welcome everybody to this meeting of Fresno City Toastmasters. My name is Chanel and I am our current club president. To start out our meeting, I'm going to read our club mission statement for our members to remind us of why we are all here and also for our guests to give us a bit more insight into the purpose of Toastmasters. Our mission is to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, which results in greater self-confidence and personal growth. We are going to be hearing today from Farron, who will be giving a speech, so we're all super excited for that. I <clears throat> would like again to thank Michael Wee, who is the, the, one of our club members who allows us to meet at his facility. We are grateful for that. And a uh, one announcement is that our two announcements actually. Firstly, our club board was talking, and we have been planning for a few weeks now to do a a dinner. Um, we're going to meet just to get together in person, and we wanted to extend that to any of our club members who might be interested in joining us. It's kind of last minute. It's going to be this Friday evening, but if any of you are free and available, you're welcome to come. You can bring your kids, you can bring your spouse, significant other, anyone with you. We're going to be meeting at a Thai restaurant in Fresno. It's at like First and Bullard, and I'll go ahead and put the, uh, but at, at 6 p.m. Yeah, thank you. So this Friday, April 29th at 6 p.m. at Sabadi Pie Lao Cuisine. I'll go ahead and put the address. Oh, Sharon put the name in the chat. Thank you, Sharon. And I'll go ahead and send that out in an email too later today so that you guys have it if you want to join. So, uh, yeah, hope to see you guys there. I'm excited to meet Heather in person for the first time after like <laughs> spending two years <laughs> speaking to each other over Zoom. <laughs> And then the second announcement, I think that most of us are already aware at this point, but Pathways is down for maintenance. And so I know a couple of you have encountered that. You have not been able to access your pathway, which is really not convenient. Apparently it's a Postmasters International thing. So they are doing maintenance on the website and you cannot um, access your pathways. But it, what, what we were told is that it, this maintenance period would go through May 9th. So on May 10th, we'll be able to access it again. So I, I would reiterate, I think that we've had people who have done this in the past. If you're not able to, to get into your pathway, I would say still feel free to give a speech and then of, of something that you want to work on or practice. And then after Pathways open back up, open back up, you can go in and go through the module and take that and finish up the module. And then on our end, we will still approve the speech that you gave. I don't want Pathways being down to be a hindrance to anybody giving speeches. All right. <clears throat> so with that, I am, we've had a couple of last minute changes to the agenda today, but I think everybody we currently have down is present. So I am going to launch into Toastmaster because I'm also the Toastmaster for today and I'll quickly introduce our topic and then we can go ahead and get into our speech. Our topic today is spring clean. Now, when you hear that, I think either one, you get really, really excited, like, wow, cleaning stuff out, making things new and shiny. That sounds amazing. Or you get really, really unexcited, like cleaning. That is the most boring thing ever. <laughs> so by, by show of hands, who would consider themselves to be a, a clean person in their, in their home? They keep things clean around them. And then by show of hands, who would consider themselves, or by show of hands, would the people that you live with consider you to be a clean person? <laughs> yes, okay. That seems like pretty consistent then. 
I myself am a, a very clean person and I have three roommates, so there's four girls in my home and I'm, I'm the one who consistently uh, wants things to be somewhat cleaner than they often are. So I have to learn to hold myself back a bit and give grace and have patience, but I, I love for things to be clean. I love for my surroundings to be aesthetically pleasing. So topic today, spring cleaning. We will delve into that perhaps more later during the table topic. But with that, I'm going to pass the podium over to Monica, who is our general evaluator for today. Please welcome Monica. Good afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and our guest. Uh, for the benefit of our members and guests, I will be the general evaluator today. I will conduct an evaluation at the end of the meeting to see how the meeting goes. Um, so for right now, I'm going to be introducing our grammarian of the day, who is Mike Ellis. You get the mute button, Mike. Here, I'm a... <clears throat> Hello, there everyone. Is. Sorry, I did not know I was on mute still. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Ellis. I'm the grammarian of the day. And I would like a little bit of grace uh, why I get uh, the word of the day ready for you, if you don't mind. I just got home and I'm a, a running behind schedule a little bit. And um, give me two seconds. So Monica, uh, introduce the uh, counter and timer wall and Zoom, and then we'll give we'll bring Mike Mike back in. Awesome, we'll be back with Mike soon. The next person I would like to introduce would be the all counter, and that would be Miss Denny Mason. I'm going to be your odd counter today, which means I'm going to listen to all of you very closely. I not only get to count odds, but this is practice for me to listen. So at the end of the meeting, I'll give you a report. Thank you. Thank you for that, Denny. The next person I would like to introduce today will be our timer, and that will be Madam Heather, Heather Davis. Thank you, Monica. As a timer today, I'm going to be timing a few different things throughout our meeting. One will be our table topics, where hopefully everyone will have an opportunity to speak on the fly, and that is generally one to two minutes. We do have a scheduled speech today, and with that said, I'm not as tech savvy as the rest of our timers are, so I have little post-its. So uh, for the speech, it's going to be five to seven minutes. Um, when you hit five minutes, I have a green little post-it with the number five. When you get that cool in between six minutes, I got a blue post it. And then when we hit that very end, I got seven minutes for red. So that is uh, what I will be doing today. And that's that's my, my gist. So I'll pass it back to Monica. Thank you, Heather. The next person I would like to introduce today will be our Zoom master who is Joey Myers. Thank you, Monica. And is that, is that, I'm on Preet? Is that how you say it? Yes, um, I'm on Preet or I'm on. <laughs> I'm on, I'm on yeah. Preet. So the T silent? The I'm on Preet. Oh, T, so you, see, you can yeah. hear the T. You say the T, yeah. <laughs> gotcha, welcome. And and sounds like you're very on the clapping hands and the hearts and stuff. Like I'm, oh, yes, that goes definitely. beyond me on the Zoom. <laughs> You've done plenty of Zooms in your time. Uh, definitely, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 welcome to the group. Thank so, you. So as Zoom master, what my job is to record the meeting, number one. Number two is to try and do a little bit of uh, viewership ninja tactics to try and get the view on the person that's speaking. We like to do a couple interesting things. We like to take, a, say, when we, the evaluation, speaker evaluation goes, we like to have the speaker's pane open pinned and then have the evaluation viewer screen pinned as well so you can see both both people in there in that evaluation side of things so that's what i'll be doing is i'll be focusing whatever pain it is maybe on the table topics will be a little bit different because we like to see each other's faces when we're talking and things like that 
but I will be moving back and forth between all those paints. So that's what I'll be doing today. Back to you, Monica. Thank you. And so I'm going to go back uh, to our grammarian of the day, Mr. Mike Elias. Hello, everyone. Thank you again for uh, welcoming me. The word of the day is minion. Um, a minion is someone who is not powerful or important, who, who obeys the orders of the powerful leaders or bosses. Minion. Mike, would you be able to copy and paste that? Or I can do that for you in the uh, chat. So I think he's going to do that. So you're going to do that, Mike? You're going to paste that in the thing? OK. All right, back to you, Monica. All right, I'm not sure if I introduce our first speaker of the day, or I'm going to go ahead and hand it back over to our Madam President, Chanel. Thank you. Yeah, as the, as the Toastmaster of the day, I will be introducing our speaker. I am very excited to introduce Farron. Farron recently announced sadly, that she is stepping down as our VP of Education. So this may be her, her final postmaster speech, at least for a while. Farron is also our immediate past president who helped lead our club through the pandemic. Before exiting, she wanted to complete one more level of her current pathway, which is the engaging humor pathway. So delivering her second and final speech for level four, Please put your hands together to welcome Farron with how to increase your social media presence by getting into reels. Thank you. Before we start the time, Joey, can you transfer hostship to me so that I can share my screen? Yes, ma'am. One second. Thank you. There you go. Awesome, thank you. I will share my screen later on in the speech, so. All right. Hmm. I am no stranger to social media. As a sophomore in high school, I was organizing my top eight friends on my MySpace page and coding my own little backgrounds and different features. If you're in the MySpace age, you know what I'm talking about. We got into the nitty gritty coding before coding was even a thing. <laughs> I have also been on Facebook since the days when you needed a .edu email address. You were a college student in order to have a Facebook. And I can look back on those cringy posts when we had to talk in the third person when updating our status. We weren't sharing photos or anything like that. It was literally just, how are you feeling or what are you doing? So you would answer in the third person. They would come out like, Farron Jacobson is nervous for her finals. Farron Jacobson is going to graduate in two weeks. Super cringy, but those were back in the day. I have also been an Instagram user for about 11 years. The platform is 12 years old. That makes me feel really old because I feel like Instagram is still fairly new. Back then, you could share one photo at a time with a caption optional. A lot of people didn't use them. There were no hashtags back then to find things just a photo. There are about eight overlays or filters that you could put over your photo, and that's what you shared. Social media has definitely evolved, and Instagram especially has evolved to include videos, carousel posts, Instagram TV channels, reels, and ads. I don't know about you, but it's the ads that really get to me. If you look at anything that's in my closet or anything that my dog has, and you ask where I got it from, it was from an Instagram ad. As soon as you tap onto something, it takes you straight to a checkout and my card information is preloaded into the app. So it's, it's a disaster. It can quickly drain your bank account if you're not careful with your social media. For the purpose of this assignment in Pathways, I was asked to increase or enhance my social media presence with an established account or create a whole new account. I have four Instagram accounts already, so I didn't want to create a new one. I was trying to enhance my main Instagram account, which is a combination of personal things plus 
my yoga teaching aspect of my job. I have several different jobs as well. That's why I have so many different Instagram feeds. Uh, as a yoga teacher, there is kind of a blurred line between your personal life and your professional life, because in class, I do share a lot of personal things, and it's a journey that I take along with my students. I'm not just teaching people how to pose to increase their strength, their flexibility, their balance. I'm also teaching people how to unify their minds, their bodies, their spirits to live the best version of their lives that they possibly can. So I like to share that type of stuff on social media. It's a cross between yoga and what's going on in my personal life. And my goal as a person and a teacher is to surround myself with people who want to be around me, right? I don't want a whole bunch of minions that are just following me. I want people following me to be authentically into me and what I'm posting and resonate with me somehow. If you don't like who I am as a person, you probably don't want to be in my yoga class and I don't want you there either. It's just a fact, right? My goal on social media is not to just create content for everybody to get a whole bunch of followers. It's to resonate with those who already follow me and to attract followers that are in line with what I'm doing as a person. And that's where I get into reels. I, because I'm an entrepreneur, I follow social media trends and I noticed and also read about Instagram carousel posts and reels doing the absolute best for, for the platform. So instead of posting just one picture, you can post a carousel where people have to scroll and flip through a bunch of different photos. And then also reels do very well. A reel is kind of like Instagram's version of TikTok. It's a short video anywhere from three seconds to 60 seconds. The average is about 15 seconds and they're paired with a sound. Now that sound is an audio clip. It could be a piece of music or it could be just someone speaking. It could be um, sections of people's speeches that they've given on other platforms. A sound is just any, any audio track that is laid over a video. I often scroll through Instagram probably way too much and I save certain sounds where I can picture myself creating a video or gathering videos and photos that I already have to put into that sound that's already trending. Uh, so after experimenting with reels for about a month, I have two, just two essential steps to increasing your engagement on social media, specifically Instagram and specifically by using Reels. Number one is to pick a trending sound. Like I said, sounds are not just music clips, but they're also just people's audio that they like to put over. It's a mix of the two sometimes. And the second one is to post your puppies. Seriously, post your puppies, your dogs. I will give an example by sharing my screen. All right, can you guys see my screen? Okay, perfect. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the sounds as well. I think I did this right. This is my feed just from April, um, just for this month of April. I have some carousel posts you can see signified with this uh, multiple squares. And then all of these that have this little, uh, what is that thing called? It's like a when they make videos, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. That symbol signifies a reel. So if I go just to my reels for August, you can see how many views, not August, April. This is April. You can see how many views I get on my posts. On posts that are just of my face as the main picture, I get about 300 people engaging with it or viewing it. So obviously people don't like my face. But when I find a trending sound, I get about a thousand, somewhere around a thousand views on these different reels. So I'll show you an example. This is a trending sound. I think it's Gary Vee. He's a really popular entrepreneur. Seven billion people need to change the conversation of what success looks like. It is not to make a billion dollars. It is to actually wake up in the morning and be in a good mood. Seven Everyone could hear that? Sweet. 
that post was a trending sound and got about 1400 views, about the same amount of accounts visited. Some people watch it multiple times. Another trending sound, it's shorter than that. When it that. comes to this sunlight, oh, I'm gonna take a picture. When it comes to this sunlight, oh, I'm gonna take a picture. So again, showing off my yoga content, maybe people don't really like the content, but the sound was trending, so it got a lot of views. Then you come over here to this picture, a reel of my boyfriend sleeping. And because it has a puppy in the video, it has double or more of the amount of views. I'm gonna lay right here and have myself a little nappy, a nice little nappy do, a little napperoni and cheese, if you will. I'm gonna lay right here and have. And then this one featuring not just my puppy, but also my other dog that passed away has the most views of any post in April with more than 7,000. You made it! <laughs> go! Go save Riley! <laughs> Take her to the moon for me. Okay? That was paired over a trending sound from Inside Out, a Disney Pixar film with Bing Bong, the imaginary friend. Still makes me emotional even watching that post. My daughter cried when I showed it to her the first time. But if I learned anything from posting these reels, it's that I can post all the yoga content I want. If it's just of my face up close, I get less than 500 views. If it's a trending sound that I happen to hit on, it's about a thousand views. But if I add a puppy or more, I get seven X the amount of views. It's insane. Let me see if that was it. Okay, yeah, let me stop screen sharing. Cool, I'm back. All right, if there are three things that I want you to take away from the speech today, it would be these. Number one, post authentically. People will resonate, you, resonate with you and some won't, but that is actually fantastic. You want quality followers, not a bunch of minions. Number two, create reels with trending sounds. If you see a lot of reels using the same sound, you tap on that sound and see a bunch of videos with a lot of views that indicates that it's a trending sound. Try to use that to fit your personal life or your industry if you're using it as an entrepreneur. And number three, post your puppies and your doggies to skyrocket your views. Cats might also work too. Thank you. Let me hold this up. Thank you, Farron. That was awesome. I always enjoy your speeches. I've also definitely found the puppy thing to be true. My social media of choice is Twitter. And any picture that I post of my dog gets like 10 times the likes of whatever, of whenever I'm posting thoughts out of my brain, apparently. People do not value those very much. I'm going to pass the podium virtually next over to Joey Myers, who is our table topics master of the day, and he will explain what that is and then lead us in our table topics time. Thank you, Ms. Chanel. And fair and no, it is not that people don't like your face. It's just that when people are on social media, it's called interrupt marketing. And basically people like to watch dog and cat videos on social media. That's the thing. People want dog faces and cat faces. It's not about Farron. It's not about Chanel. It's not about Monica. It's about dogs and cats, right? But they also like inspiration too. And that's why I think those other posts you're talking about with the voiceovers and especially the one about, about your dog, the one that passed away versus reincarnated into the new one that you guys have now, you know, that's more, that goes beyond inspiration into emotion. So that's, you know, my at least opinion on why that did really well, but no, it's not because it, that you, nobody likes your face, Farron. Come on. Great speech. So on table topics, this is the part where we separate those that this is a one to two minute speech. And it is usually on a topic of choice. And we do this in different ways. Today, we're going to do the old random number generator, 365 different questions that you don't know what your question is. 
until you pick your number and we reference whatever number is associated with that question. So this is the point where this is a tough one in, in Toastmasters for some to not know what they're going to get asked and to be able to formulate an opinion or a viewpoint in a short amount of time. And this will separate those that are minions from those that are the, what's his name in Despicable Me, Gru, the Gru's from the minions. This is where we do that. So that's what we're going to do in this one. And the way it's going to go again is I have a list of 365 different table topics, just questions. Just to give you an example, let's do that first so that we don't scare anybody away. Just an example, I'm just picking random questions here. If not now, then when? That would be your question. So you can go with that however you want. Are you happy with yourself? Would be a question. You can go with that however you want. One more example. If you could go back in time and tell a younger version of yourself one thing, what would you tell? So there's some examples. Some of these, I did get into trouble last time, I think, doing this, saying, no, these aren't that deep. They're, they're all good. It's all simple. What's your favorite color and why? But there were actually a couple deep questions on there. Not super deep, not like what's the meaning of life, but there were a little bit challenging, but it's about you. And that's, we all like to talk about ourselves a little bit. So that's what we're going to do. Any takers first off before we start volunteering people and I'm on pre, I'm not going to call on you. You don't have to talk today. You can just sit back and relax and eat your popcorn. But if you want to jump in, you can too. Denny is raising her hand. Denny. All right, Denny. So you can either Pick your own number, one between one and 365, or can let, let the Google random number generator take the lead. Do random. Random number generator. Here we go. 26. Question number 26. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? Do it again. How old would you be if you didn't know how old you are? Thanks, Joey, for that deep question. I think that means how old I am, really. Because when I was young, I always wanted to be older. And now I think I'm older, but I can't remember that I'm older. And every year, my husband has to tell me how old I am. I tell my husband that I'm old enough now to go to the senior center. And my husband, who's 17 years older than I am, doesn't think he's old enough to go to the senior center yet. And it's so much fun. There's so much fun at the senior center. I'm so glad I'm old enough now to go. I have my mom, my 93-year-old mom at home with me. And I get to take care of her and get everything she needs and make sure she's happy. And she's 93 and she's like a little kid or a teenager. Then I have a teenager at home who thinks she's older than she is. And sometimes she acts older than she is. And sometimes she doesn't. It's all in your head. And it all depends on what day you wake up, right? Thank you. Thank you, Denny. What side of the bed you wake up on? Yeah, I don't know how many times I told my six-year-old girl, where is she? She's over here, and then she's over here, a little younger in these, these photos. How many times this week I had to tell her, you're not the boss. I am the boss this week. Yeah, she's six going on 16. Anybody else? I'm Heather? Going. Yeah. All right, Heather, do you want, the, you want to pick your number or you want the Googles to do it? Let's let Google do it. All right, Google. Let's see what you say here. 288. Done a question 288. All right. What are you most excited about in your life right now today? Again, what are you most excited about in your life right now today? What am I most excited in my life right now, today? Today, I'm excited that my 
husband selfishly got called out of work, they decided to do some maintenance and do some uh, construction during the time he would be. So I get to actually spend time with him tonight when I get home, because since he started serving, our schedules just overlap. We don't really get to see each other as often. So I'm, I am genuinely excited to get to spend time with my husband and go on a bike ride tonight. That's probably what we're going to do. And then we have a volunteer appreciation event that we have been planning for months that's happening finally this week. We have uh, everybody coming together. It'll be the first time since pandemic that we've been able to have this many people. It's gonna be at the Muse home. We're very excited, a little bit stressed because there's just a lot of details, but at the end of the day, this is something that I really enjoy. I love event planning too. And hopefully one day can start or not start, but pursue that as well. And yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited to see how it's all going to turn out. So that's what I'm excited for. Very nice, Heather. You always like those nice little convenient times where things seem to work out on that day. Oh, yeah. Cool. You guys have a good time time. Sure. Dinner and a movie, all the good stuff. He's going to have to really do it tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll be He's a cooking. fun date night. <laughs> cook in the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Tacos. Yeah. Tacos. Taco Tuesday. Mm -hmm. All right. Anybody else? Monica? All right. You want to pick the number or you want Google to pick the, pick the number? Google. 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 <laughs> Google. All right. Here we go. 266. Not too far away. Which one of your responsibilities do you wish you could get rid of? That's a good question. Which one of your responsibilities do you wish you could get rid of? Which one of the responsibilities that I wish I could get rid of? I think this resonates with a lot of other people when I say this one. Laundry. I hate doing laundry. Laundry comes every weekend and it seems like it's never done. And once I'm done finishing a load, then there's something else that goes into the laundry basket. If there's anything I want to get rid of, most of all, would be my laundry. And I've tried to give that that. I've tried to give that to my husband to complete, but unfortunately, I don't like my whites turning pink. So I feel like that laundry has to be done by myself. So therefore, I cannot give that responsibility to anybody else. Another thing that my husband likes to do with my laundry is he likes to shrink stuff. I like things to fit me correctly. So I always make sure that I get my laundry done correctly. But ultimately, I don't have any minions that could help me at my house to do my laundry. So I continue to try to build a goal on how to accomplish it the correct way. I make sure that I separate my laundry. I make sure that my, my whites go with my whites. I make sure I buy my special detergent. I make sure I buy my special linen ball that goes inside my stuff. And then when I'm done with my laundry, I make sure that I fold it and I make sure that I hang it up. So that is my response. If I ever had anything that responsibility that I would love to get rid of, it would be doing the laundry at home. Love that. I feel the same way about doing dishes. I actually do the dishes and it's bittersweet. I like doing them in a meditative sense. It helps me kind of clean, do that kind of thing. But as I'm doing them, I just keep getting more dishes being put in. I'm almost done. I'm putting the sponge back and then another one gets thrown in. I'm like, dude, stop stop eating. And it's usually the kids that do that. Thanks, Monica, for sharing that. Anybody else? Mike Ellis. All right. You want to pick your number or you want Google? I'll do question 117, please. 117. Let's see here. 117. What have you read online recently that inspired you? Again, what have you read online recently that inspired you. It doesn't have to be online. It could be a book. It could be a normal book. Okay. I, I have a, a normal book that I would like to share with you. Um, most of my online, Joey, as you point out, I watch dog and cat videos. I use it for mindless applications to, to waste time. So, but, um, 
I did read a wonderful book. Uh, the author is a, a Dr. Robert Green, and the book is on um, the laws of human nature. And so the book was very well written. Uh, you can kind of get a sense of the author. It's, it's a real, um, he's a real brain nerd, uh, but he uh, applicates his, um, his findings in a way that's uh, very relatable to, um, to all, I think all the readers on a spectrum, whether you're uh, a fellow doctor or you're just a person enjoying their journey of life and want to uh, better themselves by learning uh, the, this, the laws of how, um, how since the dawn of time people have kind of been and um, kind of and how you can really find these good and bad features within all of us and how to um, make everything that you experience in life help you move forward uh, and using uh, powers of uh, persuasion and powers of leadership and it's quite a, a, a well-read book and I enjoyed it very well. <clears throat> I've been recommending it to uh, um, anyone that would like to listen. So thank you for letting me share that this afternoon. Thanks Mike. Good one. Yeah, I like those kind of books too. It gives you thinking about especially when it comes to human behavior. It's always fun to watch humans. People watch and it's also fun to learn about what causes them to do the different things that the that they that we do? Should I say I'm not a robot or anything I'm included in that? No, he really puts. Uh, he has this uh, phrase. He puts some uh, puts some perspective. Really goes. Uh, people are like trees. Everyone is a whole bunch of kind of trees. There's trees that are, are year round. There's trees that are shed leaves and spiky leaves, short leaves, big fat bush trees, and all kinds of trees. Mm -hmm. just appreciate everybody like a tree. And you'll find life is a lot more easy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good yeah. Right. Good perspective. All right. Anybody else? I think we have maybe time for one more because we only have one evaluation today. So I think Chanel, Baron, I know you spoke. Do you want to go? Chanel? Yeah. <laughs> Joey, I will take number 338. 338 can make me go all the way to the bottom of this list here 338 where where or who do you turn to when you need good advice where or who do you turn to when you need good advice i have found this to be true about advice and i think that you all might be able to relate to this I do not think that any one person is an expert at giving on good advice on every subject. I think that what I have found to be key in my life is learning to discern which people are wise in certain areas and being able to turn to them for advice on those certain things. If I need a shoulder to cry on, and I just need somebody to listen and understand, then I would call my mom, most certainly. If I am in need of spiritual advice and trying to discern where the Lord may be calling me in life, I would rely on my mentor. Her name is Yolanda. If I am looking for financial advice about how to proceed with money, then there are a handful of people who have made wise decisions in those areas that I would call upon. I think that this is, I think it's overall a, uh, a good strategy. Um, and then if I am just looking for somebody who can be there for me that I know loves me unconditionally and can be a distraction or get my mind off things if things are difficult, then I would rely upon my sisters. And of course, continually on the lookout for more wise people that can be a support depending on the need because I, I don't know about you guys, but I certainly need all of the wisdom and good advice that I can get being poured into my life. <laughs> Thank you. Love it. Thanks, Chanel. 
it, a mentor is the person that paid the dumb tax. So you don't have to, that's basically encapsulated. That's what the mentors are. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. Thank you. With that, I think we're done with our table topics. Great work, everybody. Thank you for sharing. And thank you for participating in that. You're not knowing the question until you get asked the question after picking the number, whether you did it yourself or you sent Google. And Google usually does a pretty good job of YouTube too, I think, telling you how to do stuff. If you want to learn how to do something. In some, some areas, it's a good mentor. So with that, I will pass it back over to, I think, Monica, right? Our general evaluator. So I'll send it over to Monica. Thank you, guys. Such good topics today. Very good. I'm first going to be introducing um, back our grammarian um, to go over his report of who spoke our grammar of the day word. Actually, right, so Monica, you can go to, who's our, is that Heather, the evaluator? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, Heather, yes. Sure. It's all good. Thank you, Monica. So today I'm going to be evaluating Farron's speech, which I want to say first and foremost, it was wonderful. I was very excited coming from someone that is essentially in the same age group as you. I knew a lot of the things that you were saying, but there were also things that I still don't know or understand like reels. So it was great that you had used that as the center for your um, topic. And I just realized I wasn't timing myself. <laughs> Excuse me. But overall, your speech was well structured. I think that you hit everything that you needed to talk about. I loved that you took your time easing into the introduction and how you use some cringy throwbacks to really get us thinking. And my goodness, I can't believe we did take the time to really code that, find all those special stickers, and would fight to be the person's number one on their front page. So it just really brought me back to the past and showed me just how things truly have changed over the years. Um, you made it personal, which is great. You talked about the balance between professional and personal and how you get four accounts. And it's really easy to do that. Um, I find myself having three accounts from time to time. So it's great that you talked about how you want to use this, not necessarily to gain more followers that you know, don't care about you, but more about what your message is and what your central focus is, which from my understanding is about yoga and dogs, which is great, especially on social media, because everybody wants to see cute puppies, which you talked about too, towards the end of your speech and how you encapsulated that. You also define what reels are. Like I said, you did actually teach us some things, what uh, people are looking for when it comes to reels, what's trending. You showed great examples. You showed us your own personal profile. I do want to say that because you shared your screen, I think that made it really hard for you to kind of gauge the time um, because you did go over a little bit about three minutes. So you were at 10 minutes and 13 seconds, but this is also your last speech, your last hurrah. So I get wanting to just kind of go out with a bang and get it all in there. Um, you were clear, your language was well uh, understood. You didn't use words that were uh, people wouldn't know. You tried to keep it as simple as possible. Your vocal variety was great. You used different tones, different speeds. I could tell a little bit you were sometime trying to think and remember like with how you would kind of stutter just a little bit. And that I recognize that because I'm the same exact way too. Your eye contact is great. You were in the box. Um, you were a little off center, but that's just me being picky, but overall you were great. You were in your frame, uh, you use hand gestures. Uh, let's see. And you seem comfortable and interested in what you're talking about. And that really translated well into your speech. And I just overall enjoyed it. I hope others did too. And I'm sad that this is your last speech, but thank you so much for sharing that. And I will definitely be learning how to do reels now. So thank you, Baron. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, I remember seeing your blue post-it and then I never saw another one. I think it's because I was screen sharing and just not mm -hmm. focusing. So I'm sorry for going over. <laughs> oh, good. I just, that's something I think we have to think about for others too, that when you do share your screen, because I've tried to do that too and I'm trying to keep an eye on the timer and also me, I'm not super tech savvy. So that didn't make it any easier on you. <laughs> But yeah, just something to think about in future um, speeches for all of us, I think, while we're still on Zoom. 
And Heather, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce you again to do the timer report from here as well, too. Thank you, Monica. So all of my minions, you guys, did fairly well. Chanel, you were at 1 minute and 57 seconds right there, being uh, just about two minutes. Denny, you were at 1 minute and 10 seconds. Monica, 1 minute and 36 seconds. Michael, one minute and 39 seconds, and myself at one minute and 16 seconds. I'm sorry, Joy, I kind of forgot to time you in between there and here, but- Oh, you didn't have to do that. You were on. <laughs> I'll pass it back to Monica, thank you. Thank you for that. And next I'll be introducing our all counter, Denny. This was a fun day. I decided to do this just a little bit differently today. And I'm gonna give a most improved on the Oz and um to Heather. Heather, and this, this is just a little bit of an evaluation, but I, know, I remember when you came in and you're much more comfortable now speaking. There are, there's still some us and ums to work on. So I don't want it to go to your head. However, you're so much more comfortable. It's really nice listening to you. I remember that your voice used to go up sometimes. At the end, you don't do that anymore. There's, you're just most improved. Absolutely. Thank you, Benny. Mm -hmm. Farron, you did great. The only, I caught an us and an um in there and it really was transitioning you were going from one thought to the other because it's so unlike you to have an um, um in anything you're so perfect chanel i caught you with an uh and an um mm -hmm. mike ellis you're doing so much better your word to work on is um, a long time ago, I went into a meeting of a car club. It was all guys. They were sitting around in a circle. And when I walked in, I was the only woman there. I sat down because I, I knew most of the guys there. I sat down and they didn't talk at all. It was, they were all silent. It was the weirdest feeling being a woman because when women are together we're never silent silence feels weird but men i guess that's like different planet men seem to be able to handle that okay we have to get comfortable with having a little silence in between sentences there don't there doesn't always have to be an uh or an um or a sound from one sentence to the other and it feels weird, but it sounds really good. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for that, Denny. The next person will be Mike as our grammarian report. Thank you, Monica. We did a very good job. I think everyone used the word of the day. Um, including myself, only when I introduced it, of course. Uh, uh, Chanel, I, did you use it? I didn't yeah. use it. No, okay, you're the only one I didn't. Uh, you and De uh, Denny, I don't think used it either, but uh, Julia Farron and Monica and Heather did a great job, thank you. Thank you for that. I know we are, I'm gonna be giving the general evaluation over the meeting. I think it went really well. I'm gonna be kind of fast because I know we're kind of short on time. So I'm gonna pass it over to our Madam President, Chanel. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Uh, <clears throat> virtual stickers to everybody who jumped in today at the last minute as, as usual as often happened to Monica. Thank you for being general evaluator. Denny, thank you for doing the all counter role. And Heather, thank you for jumping in as timer. Also, thank you guys for bearing with the reduced audio quality today of the new speaker. But luckily, Denny, prepared as always, to <laughs> have this speaker in her car. 
So that is wonderful. She has batteries. She's got band-aid. She's got everything. <laughs> she is a mom and a grandma and a daughter. Swiss Army wallet, Denny. <laughs> On, on the agenda for next week, I'm going to be speaking. Yikes, I better get on that. I'm going to move Emerson to next week also because he wasn't able to give his speech today due to a uh, last-minute work conflict. Monica, are you wanting to move your speech to May 17th? So that will be after Pathways reopen. I believe I, I can do that. I, yeah, I'm hoping I don't have training that day, but I'm hoping yes. Okay, okay. I will put you down there then. Would anybody else like to sign up for a speech? Yeah, I'll sign up for a speech. Can I do it on the uh, May 10th, please? Yes, definitely. Thank you. Cool. Oh. What was that, Denny? It's Mexican Mother's Day. In Mexico, they always celebrate Mother's Day on May 10th. Did you guys catch that? Mexico, they celebrate Mother's Day. On on yeah, on May tenth. May tenth, I guess, is Mother's Day in Mexico. Mm. All right. I to, oh, I'm sorry. Know. I have to go, but please let me sign me up for anything except for Zoom Master, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you guys next week, I or I'll it. see you Friday. You. Bye. Yep. Friday. Bye, Heather. All right. What did she say not to sign her up for? Zoom master. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I will I'll put Heather down for table topic. Joey, are you going to be here? Yep. You can put me down for Toastmaster or general evaluator, whatever you want to. Okay. You want to be, you can be Toastmaster. So Farron, you're still coming, right? Until through June or are you done? Is this your last day, last day? Or is it just your last speech? I haven't decided. <laughs> <laughs> I, All right. I think that's it for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys Friday though. Cool. Okay, and then Monica or Mike, are either of you going to be here next week and able to take a role? You can put me wherever. Okay. Um, you want to be Toastmaster? And I'll, I'll move Joey down to General Evaluator. Toastmaster, that's kind of big, isn't that? <laughs> I think General Evaluator is bigger. Really? Yeah. You'll do, you'll do great. Okay, there you go. We just got to get the speakers to send their intros to you, though. That's that's probably the biggest part. Once you okay. got that, that's easy. You just read that out and do the theme, you know, do the theme and introduce a general eval. I think general eval does most of the work, I would say, or not most of the work, but harder most work. Most of the talking. Yeah, no problem. Put me down there. Yeah, I'll, I'll get with Joey. He'll, he'll talk yep. to me. I'll help you. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk you through it. My mentor. I just made you my yeah. mentor. <laughs> <laughs> I paid the dumb tax. So you don't have to, Monica. <laughs> you know, I'll take a role as well if you'd like. <clears throat> okay. Would Would you like to be a general evaluator, Mike? No. Uh, <laughs> do you want to do evaluator? I think you. I know you have to give three speeches. I know you've given three speeches in the past. Did you want to do be an evaluator, one of the speakers, like Chanel or who'd you say, Emerson? Emerson. Do you want to try that, Mike, or no? Uh, can can you send me the criteria to to be? I, I know it's on uh, Toastmasters, which uh, is There's under many hats. Yeah, um, um, under construction or whatever. I try to get on there. This well, if you go, Mike, funny. if you go into the email that Chanel sent on our agenda in there, uh -huh. I think you, she has the as a an attachment. She has the Toastmasters wears many hats PDF. So okay, if you just go in there and then just go all the way down to Evaluator, and it'll right. it'll give you the criteria there. Yeah, I'll do a speech eval. Cool. Yeah, you, you can evaluate me and I'll make sure to send you the information ahead of time. Yeah, that'll help too. That'll yeah. be great. Okay, thank you. All right, and I know that we are over time. I, 
wanted to acknowledge our guests. So I'm on Preet. Thank you for coming. And were there any uh, questions or comments that, that you had before we adjourned today? Um, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Monica, for, um, for you know giving me the link and having me part. Um, I just had a couple of questions, but I'll touch base with Monica. And then if um, there's anything else, I'll just touch base with you guys. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. And do we have your thank email? Thank you, Mon uh, Monica. Um, knows it. Monica has it, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually a co-worker of Monica. Um, just a little bit about me. I'm a patient advocate here at the Fresno VA. And um, this this class, this training would be very helpful for me because we have to do a lot of presentations in our department and I struggle a lot. So public speaking is something, you know, like um, one of the um, one of the people said already saying um a lot, taking a lot of breaths or just speaking a lot, just everything and everything but uh, what's a word vomit type of thing <laughs> is what I have a hard time with. So I think this would be very helpful. Um, again, I'll just reach out to Monica and follow up and then hopefully be part of this group. <laughs> cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having thank me. You. Bye. Good to have you. All right, uh, I'm, we'll adjourn the meeting then. All right, we're at re real quick. So Farron, thank you so much for all the years. Okay. Appreciate you all, all your time and all your wisdom that you've, you've done and the mentors that you've been to other mentees and things like that. And so I know we're, we're not saying goodbye, goodbye, because you're still like a text away, but just wanted to say how much we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you're you. Wonderful. I appreciate that. Thanks, man. All right. Good luck. <laughs> Have a good week, everyone.